All right, this is Mr. Culp here, and I wanted to go through a, a typical set of VEX IQ building instructions to give you some hints, some tips, and how to read the instructions. So what I have pulled up right here is the VEX IQ base bot build instructions for the VEX IQ version 2 kit. This right here is the basic robot that you'll use for a large number of projects and it's a good starting point for a lot of your own projects. If you're having difficulty, you know, figuring out how to get a robot just driving around on, on the table. So let, let's, let's go through this. And the first page right here gives you kind of, um, you know, a how to read the parts. And that's one of the biggest things that students um, have difficulty with is, you know, knowing what size parts that they need. And so right here it shows you on a, on a typical beam, you're going to read the number of holes. So for example, on this one right here, all right, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes. So that's an eight length beam. And that's pretty easy to understand. Where students really have difficulty with are uh, these right here, these plates. Um, they don't know, you know, which holes to count. Does this say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? Is this a one, two, three, a three by eleven? Because it looks like you've got, you know, three holes along this side and eleven holes along this side. That's not how you read this right here. You only count the holes along the top. Those top holes right there. It even shows you that right here. You can see this is a one, drops down to here. This is a one point five. So one and a half. This is number two. So in reality, this right here is not a 3 by 11, but a 2 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is a 2 by 6 beam or 2 by 6 plate. Down here, you can scan to download the VEX IQ part ruler, and I highly recommend that you have a couple of those printed out as you begin to build anything from VEX instructions. So let's come over here and let's take a look at what those uh, look like. So when you come up here, this, it'll take you to this page right here, and there are two that you can download. And since we're located in the U.S., we would download the U.S. or letter one and we'll print them out. You need to have them printed so that um, their scale is proper. So if I click right here, let me make this bigger. So if you've got you know questions about how long a beam is, you can essentially print this out and then just place it directly over the printed page and it'll tell you exactly how long it is in uh, VEX beam or VEX holes. This right here, um, all right, this right here is for gears. It'll tell you exactly how many teeth. All you do is you lay that gear over the template and it'll tell you how many gears it has or excuse me how many teeth that gear has so for example 12 24 36 48 and the largest ones are uh, 60 gears this right here is for all of your different uh, connectors L pieces etc and then you have um, a standard uh, ruler here that's both in centimeters and in inches so I highly recommend that you print out at least a couple of these and have them available while you build. All right, let's go back to the uh, instructions. This down here is a little key that essentially has um, icons that uh, tell you important stuff as you build. For example, if it wants you to notice something that has an eyeball, this will tell you to rotate your uh, part or your robot as you build. This right here 
is generally if there's a incorrect way to do something and it's commonly done, they'll put this here to let you know don't do it that way. And in general, if they've got uh, this red incorrect one, they'll have the correct um, version of it right beside it. This right here, once again, tells you what all the parts are. This tells you how to use the uh, part puller. And a lot of students don't realize this, but uh, you've got a little um, kind of, I guess, tail on here. allows you to pry parts up. All right, the next pages. These are when it gets into the actual parts that you're going to use in your build. All right, this icon right here, signifying a gear, tells you everything you need for your drivetrain, your wheels, tires, shafts, and stuff like that. Now, I don't recommend that you go off these pages and go get everything from this page and then the next page and the next page. You can if you want. I just don't like to build that way. All right, next page. You can see right here it has this um, kind of connector pin icon right there. Basically, that tells you all the connectors that you're going to use. Then right here, you can see up here in the upper left, it has this controller icon. And these are all the motors, batteries, brain, uh, wires, etc. that you're going to need. And then finally, you can see over here that we've got this uh, icon in the shape of a VEX beam. And once again, that's going to tell you all the beams and plates that you're going to need. Now we get to the actual building instructions. And here's what I recommend. I recommend you have a minimum of three students. And one student is the part getter. What they're going to do is they're going to read the instructions. And they're going to go and they're going to get the parts that are up here. It tells you exactly what you need. You need eight of these right here. And you're going to need two 2 by 12 beams. And once again, what you need to do is, as you get the beams, either count the holes along the top, or place it on that printed um, printable VEX IQ parts ruler. Now then, down here, so once the getter gets the parts, then you've got a second student that's going to arrange those parts. And what they're going to do, they're going to lay them out, and I recommend that you lay them out exactly in this configuration right here. And then the third student is the builder. They're actually going to assemble. And you might have multiple people doing each job, in fact, it might require more than one getter. It might require more than one builder. And you'll see why in just a minute. And then you can rotate those parts as you go through the build, or those jobs as you go through the build. Now here is where uh, students get confused a lot. And that is this 2x. So what this means is, is that you need to build two of these and it looks like a lot of students would be like well it's showing me i'm building this one and then this one but what this is doing this this one right here this shows you how you're going to put the parts together and then this one down here shows you what it will look like when you're done with that step notice it says to do this twice but you only have a picture of one completed part you need to have two of these. So you'll do this twice. And then you'll take this part, and you'll notice that this part right here, this part right here, is that part right there. So you're just going to take this part, move it down to the next step. And once again, notice, you're going to do this twice. So when you're all done, when you're completely finished, you're going to have two of these right here. Now, one thing that students get confused by and teachers themselves is they think, well, if I'm going to be building two of these, well, that means I need to get 16 of these and four of these, right? No, it's already figured in. Let's, let's go through and count. This right here 
is your part that you're going to have at the end. You're going to have two of these, right? You're going you're to have two of these done. You started out with eight of these connectors, and you've got one, two, three, four of them on one part. Which means, because you're building two of these parts, you're going to have used all eight. Same thing with the 2x12 beam. Once again, this part only has one beam on it, but you're going to build two of those parts, meaning you're going to use both beams. So you don't have to multiply this up here by two or anything like that. It tells you the parts that you need to get to build two of these. All right, let's go down through the instructions. And same thing here. You're going to be building two. And one thing that's really, really, really important that I try to teach students is orient your parts as you build them the way that they are oriented in the instructions. What I mean by that is, notice the way this is turned. You have these four pegs sticking out this way. You have this end piece flat that way. When I'm building, I'm going to lay that part on the ground, or if I need to, I'm going to hold it up to my computer screen or my printed instructions so that it matches the exact orientation of this piece right here, so that I know that I'm getting these pieces in in the right spot. So always orient them exactly the way they're oriented in the um, instructions. And if you're having problems, you're having difficulty, um, oftentimes if you just take your part, look at the way it's oriented in your instructions, and then orient your part that way, the instructions become a lot clearer. And one thing that I like to do is once you're done with a complete set of instructions, or, or a complete page, excuse me, once you're done with a complete page, so let's say you've got this piece and it's completely built. And remember, you can have two of them, right? So you can have two of those. I like to have a student that's a checker. What they do is they take the part that has been built by the builder or the assembler and they check it against the plans. And what I teach them to do is to start at one end and work your way down through checking everything along the way. And one of the things that you need to do as part checkers also check that you've got these located in the correct hole number. And that's another big thing for students if they mess up. Let me see if I can zoom in. I can. Okay. So notice when you are building this piece right here. Notice when you're building this piece right here that um, this right here needs to be in, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five holes. Okay, this is five holes over. And same thing on this one, one, two, three, four, five. So this is going in the fifth set of holes. And that's something you need to be aware of as you're building. Make certain that you're counting um, those holes and exactly where you need to put everything. Another thing to be aware of, you'll notice that uh, this right here has a blue collar. You're going to notice in your VEX kit that these metal pieces have different color collars. Make sure you have the right color collar and never substitute, because uh, I have students that do this, they get lazy or they, they can't find the correct metal. So this is a metal shaft right here and they substitute in a plastic shaft and unfortunately oftentimes with the torque that these motors are putting out they end up bending and then subsequently breaking these um, uh, plastic ones so don't substitute a plastic um, um, shaft in for a metal one and once again always make certain that you're following the correct color right, let's go down through these instructions see if there's anything else to be aware of as you go along. Aha!
These right here. These little washers right here. Make sure you don't leave them out. What they do is they create a little bit of spacing between the actual Bex beam here and the tire, and they allow that tire to rotate a lot more smoothly than it would if you did not have that little washer in there. Let's see here. Keep going down. I don't see anything tricky on any of these. Ah, there we go. So you're going to notice, okay, you, you've built two of these, okay? You've built two of them. And notice this right here. It tells you to rotate. So you're going to build, you're going to take this plate right here, and you're going to snap it on to there, right, right there, and you're going to have this empty area right here. Well, you've got another one of these parts right here. And notice it tells you to flip it over before you put it on. So always pay attention to these icons that tell you to turn the model. There's um, one right here that tells you to rotate it. So once again, always be looking for those right there. I think that's it. My biggest piece of advice is take your time. Be very deliberate in your actions. In other words, make absolutely certain that you know you're supposed to be doing what you're doing. Look at those instructions and verify. And once again, my little work train where you have one or two students that are the part getters. They've got their own laptop and they're going to get the parts for each step. And what I like to have them do is to lay them out on a piece of paper, a blank sheet of paper, and label that step. You know, this is step three, all the parts for step three. And then another student comes along and organizes them. And those students, while those parts are being organized, they're now off searching for the parts for the next step. So that student's organizing and he slides it over to the assembler. And the assembler uh, assembles. And then when he's done assembling, he's going to slide it over to the checker, who's then going to make final check to make sure that it's been assembled properly for each step along the way. And you can rotate those um, jobs so that everybody gets to do a little bit of something. And, you know, a typical base bot build when you're talking a, a you know, typical 45 to 50 minute class period should not take more than two days. It should not take more than two class periods if it's done properly. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, good luck building your base bots.